it says he will manifest himself. How many of you believe that? You believe God will manifest. He manifests himself. Yahweh Shaddai Elohim Jireh. He manifests himself. Glory to God. Good morning. Hallelujah to God. Um, I don't know what day it is. I'm sure Lydia will be able to tell me. Hallelujah. But we have come a mighty long way to the glory of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Like right after this Saturday, we've got two Saturdays left. My goodness. Glory to Jesus. It's the 26th day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can we bless the name of our Lord? Can we bless him? Can we bless him? He has brought us a mighty long way. What a journey this has been. Um, it's been a very different soul detox for me as a uh, personally. Um, it's been different, but it's been it's been it's been God. It's been yeah. <laughs> what a journey. Um bless the name of the Lord Jesus, who is worthy to be praised. There's one thing I would say that the appetite to the appetite to know him more, to press in more, to be conformed more into his image, to love him more has been you know, uh, that's definitely been one thing for me. I like God opened me more up to you. Is there is there any is there anybody else like that? Like it's been like, hmm, and and I, I know I need you more. I know that, uh, yeah, God, I I need to I need to know you more. I need to love you more. Okay, I see that heart. So I, I feel like I'm not alone. Okay, Sheba's with me. Iman's with me. Uh, okay, good. Okay, Dara's with me. I'm not alone. That's uh, Sibs with me. Okay, Nina's with me. Glory to Jesus. Lydia's with me. Okay, I, I see. I see the weaknesses of my flesh. Uh, yes, Jesus. Uh, oh, you gonna you're gonna you are highlighting that. Okay, Jesus. I see that. I see that. Jesus. Let's exchange. Let's exchange. Let let's exchange. Okay. I did more discipline. Let's exchange. Let's exchange. Okay. Uh yeah, I need I need more time with you, God. Okay, God. Okay, God. Amen. Amen. It's it's been surgery. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. It this is an excavation season. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And Sib, if he's ex if he's excavating, he's getting it get he's 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 going to sort out our foundation, making the foundation good so that what he builds will be able to stand. So we say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus, for pulling out what will threaten what you're building in me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I may have an ouch here and there. I may have more than an ouch. I may have a, ooh, Lord, that, 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 mm, mm-hmm, uh, and and let can I can I how many of you have heard some things about some disciplines he wants you to have this year that you try to act like oh you you were not talking to me anybody anyone heard some things that you're like <laughs> if I if I hold my ears may maybe I can act like he how many of you try to do the mannequin challenge for god like he's talking that you're like if i freeze <laughs> but the lord who gives instruction will also give grace to carry out that instruction in the name of the lord jesus in the name once he has spoken twice, I have heard that power belongs to God, but I pray that we will not just hear it twice in relation to power, that we will um, 
when it comes to whatever instruction he gives us in the name of the Lord Jesus. We will hear him. We will not forget the instruction. Oh my God, would you pray that for yourself? That is a prayer. That is a prayer. Sometimes, a lot of times actually, the breakthrough, the miracle, the next level is in the instruction. And if you forget an instruction, how many of you ever forgotten the keys you needed? How many of you ever forgotten the keys you needed and then you couldn't open the door? My God, would you pray for yourself? Now, God, help me not to forget what you said. Help me not to forget the instruction. I will never forget the story of that young prophet. He went as God told him to go. He had the instruction as God instructed, but when he got and he started to commune with the older prophet, he compromised on the instruction he had received because he's, he was with an older prophet. Would you pray for yourself? God, help me not to forget the instruction. Help me not to forget. Come on, pray that prayer. Father, as I, as I, as I continue living for you day by day, help me never to forget what you have instructed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, thy word would I hide in my heart that I may not sin against you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, help me to remember what you said and help me to weigh up every other voice <laughs> to your voice. Do you hear that? Help me to weigh the voices I hear <clears throat> to your voice uh, and help me, God, not to <laughs> accept another voice above your voice in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, you see, Eve knew what the instruction was, but she heard another voice and that voice caused her to challenge what she had, the instruction she had been given. And as she challenged that, she began to see outside of what God had said and that caused her to be to fall. And then obviously bring Adam, I pray that we will not be those that um, betray the instruction we have received in the name of the Lord Jesus. It is Saturday. We didn't give you a reminder, but it's not too late. It is the time for communion. All right. How many of you need a little, a little, a little moment to get ready for communion? Are you ready? Or if you're, if you're ready, let me know you're ready and we can go. But if you need a moment, just tell me I need a moment and I will, I will hold on a minute. Okay, I'm ready. I see I'm ready. All right. All right. I see I need a moment. I'll give you a moment. You go ahead. Glory to Jesus. We'll take the communion and then uh, we will hand over. But while uh, people are getting themselves ready, how many of you were blessed yesterday? I don't even, you know, there are some things that bless you. There's some words that bless you, and then there are some words that provoke you. You see, I'm of the belief, I think I came into this in 2021 or 2022, that uh, the blessing is good, the blessing is great. But scripture says we shouldn't forsake the gathering of the brethren as in the manner of some. And then it says that we should provoke one another unto good works, provoke one another. Uh, I believe that the blessing is good, but there are some things that come to provoke you. Somebody type in the comments, provoke somebody. And I, I really do believe that the provoking of one another will shift us more to move. I believe when the body is provoked, when we come together and we are provoked, provoking hmm, may just be the trigger to action. The trigger from moving us from being just still to, to move it. How many of you, I want you to, you tell me, between blessed and provoked yesterday, uh, uh, what, yeah, provokes the trigger to action. What, what was it for you? Were you blessed yesterday or were you provoked? And I know some of you politicians would probably say both. I don't want both. I'm asking you either or, all right? The word that the Lord, I don't even, you know, 
as highly provoked fantastic fantastic okay i see one with the highly provoked i, I want you to choose were you blessed or provoked yesterday because you know I, I i went back to watch and i look and i don't know I, I don't know i don't know if if the woman of god if 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 Pastor Dukbe knew exactly where she was going. I knew she was ready. And I, I actually have a question. Did you know the direction that you were going? Or did God just breathe on that moment? And we just received a provoking. The rest of you, you're not sure. You, you, you don't know whether to write. I, I still want to know, were you blessed or provoked yesterday? Did, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? What did, were you provoked? And if you were provoked, okay, Sheba said you were provoked. If you were provoked, I want to, I want to know. Yesterday, did you do something in the today of yesterday in line with the word you received? Uh, 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 did you, did you do something? You know, yesterday I was, uh, I was. I was further into recovery, put it that way. Uh, the past couple of days, I've been overcoming. Uh, 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 in, in the week where we're praying for of our health, I've been overcoming uh, a, a challenge in my health. And uh, yesterday, I got several calls from uh, leaders in Salem, South London. They were like, I hope you're resting. I hope you're... And I, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm resting. But the word we received this morning it's not a word I can receive and just lie in bed. Now, don't get me wrong, rest is part of uh, what God has called us to do. When I said, even if I'm lying in bed and I do something towards that which God has entrusted me, the, I just believe the word required action, initial action. It's not a word you receive and say, amen. You need to, you just need to, this you just need to do something like you know what i i'm i overcome procrastination i overcome postponing my today i overcome letting tomorrow still that which today needs to do do you want to let to, to, like today had a different when she said today if you will hear my voice had it not your heart now it's i said no i need to we need to respect today a little more okay I, I, would you say that would you say i will respect my today i will respect my today i will i will respect my today i will respect my today i will respect my today come on i will respect today is spiritual today is holy come on today all right, glory to Jesus. You don't listen. If you if you miss that word, maybe you were in prayer, but you had fallen asleep before before that moment. You need to go back and watch watch it from the beginning and follow. I've never seen grace and I said, how did we start from grace and truth and here and here we are? But the word of God is it's so multifaceted that he he's able to break like wow, glory to God. So Father, that word may, may not be, yeah, courage to move. Come on now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. It's communion day. Are you ready? Are you ready? You got your communion. Remember what we say about the communion. It's not the loaf of bread. It's not the whole, whole bread. It's just a piece. A, a little, a little. A little piece of the bread, a little cracker, a little, and something to represent the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Can we thank God for the body that was broken for us? And we thank God for the blood that was shed for us. Come and give him praise. Let's come with thanksgiving. Thank him for the new covenant that you have. The Bible says, Jesus says, this is the blood of my new covenant. That new covenant says that he is merciful to our iniquities and he doesn't remember our sins anymore. Would you thank him that that new covenant says he inscribes his words in our hearts and in our minds? Would you thank him that that new covenant says we all know him? Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We bless your name. We thank you, Father, for the new covenant that we have in you. 
We thank you for access to you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for your body broken for us. Uh, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. According to John chapter 6, he says, if we eat of his body and drink of his blood, we have his life in us. Would you thank God for the life of God that you are about to be re-infused with? Thank God for Zoe, the life of God, the abundant life of God, the one that has nothing missing, nothing broken. We thank you, Jesus. I'm referring to John chapter 6, where he tells them, if you eat my body and if you drink my blood, you have my life in him. Let's look at the scriptures to remind us of that, even as we get ready to take the communion john chapter 6 thank you jesus let's because of where we are we'll just go to verse 53 john 6 53 thank you yahweh the word of the lord says so jesus said again I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood, hallelujah, is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I live because of the living father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. Glory to Jesus. Hmm. Hallelujah. Do you see there? And I, I grew up with this scripture for communion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, for I pass to you, I pass on to you, what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord took, Je the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new testament, is the new covenant between God and his people. This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remem as often in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat the, this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So we don't want to take this unwordly. And I think it was one of the first soul detoxes that the Lord opened me up to. John chapter six, and it became an anchor for me. Whenever I take the communion, I do it in remembrance of the Lord. But what is it? Am I what? What am I remembering? Yes, I remember the price that He paid on the cross. I remember that which He did for me. I remember the new covenant, which is why I love to say the new covenant. He inscribes his laws on my heart and my mind. He's merciful to my iniquities. He, he remembers my sins no more. I know him. I know him. Because the scripture says they will no longer would they have to teach one another, for they will all know me. He is my God, and I am his son. Are you with me? I remember the terms of the new covenant. But then I also remember, according to John chapter 6, and as I partake of his body and I partake of his blood, I have his life in me. I call it the life infusion. That's not me making it up. That's what he said. 
if you feed and there are different ways we feed on him we feed on him through his word but we also feed on him as we take of his body and of the blood of jesus i remember that there is something called the power of the indestructible life i remember that all the way back when abraham was given offering to the king of salem Melchizedek, he gave him bread and wine i go all the way to hebrews and i see <laughs> the power of the indestructible life as you partake of the communion this morning i want you to know that you're feeding on christ and because you're feeding on christ you receive life infusion you receive the life of god infused in you in the name of the lord jesus you have eternal life in the name of the lord jesus you have the life of god on the inside of you in the name of the lord jesus and as we do that we even read that which um pastor dorothy helped us put together hallelujah glory to jesus if you are on the What's it called? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. If you're on the telegram, you would have received it. So would you bring that up? Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you there? Do you have it? Thank you, Yahweh. Fantastic. All right. With the um with that in your hand. For those of you that may not, I'm trying to put that up there in the comment. Thank you, God, that that worked. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Thank you, Master. Let me see if I can do one better. Okay. You see it now? Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. All righty then. Let's, let's go. It says, I, I thank you, Jesus, for this communion of which I'm about to partake in remembrance of you. Your body and your blood, which are symbolized by this bread and wine. I sanctify it and use it as a symbol to show that I'm feeding on your body and drinking of your blood. As I partake of this cup, the cup of the new covenant, I do so mindfully with honor and reverence and not in an unworthy or haphazard manner. Father, help me to partake of this in faith and with faith. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our high priest. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the mystery of the communion. Thank you for your body that was broken for me. Thank you for your, thank you for the power of the indestructible life. Your life will invigorate me. Today, I eat of the bread of life which came down from heaven. As I eat of your body and drink of your blood, I have eternal life and live forever. For your flesh is food indeed, and your blood is drink indeed. As I eat your flesh and drink your blood, I abide in you and you abide in me. Through this communion, I have your life in me, everlasting life, eternal life. I will not live a natural life, Father. I receive a life transfusion as I partake of the body and blood of your son. Life is trans transmitted and infused on the inside of me. Your eternal life, your everlasting life. Thank you, Father, that your word says, in him was life and that life was the light of men. Father, as your life is in me, if there is anything that is not of you in my spirit, soul or body, let the life of God eradicate it in the name of Jesus. Father, whatever needs to be healed, let it be healed. Whatever needs to be restored, let it be restored. Whatever needs to leave, let it leave. 
Fuel me with you, God. Fuel me with the life of God on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you go ahead and partake of the body and of the blood of the new covenant in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Would you go ahead and bless the name of the Lord? Thank him for his life on the inside of you. Give him glory, give him honor. Thank him. Thank him for life on the inside, his life. Thank you, Father, for your life in us. Thank you for the power of the indestructible life. Thank you, Father, for eternal life, that we live in eternal life even now. We have eternal life now. This is eternal life, that we know you, Father, and your Son whom you sent. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for life in our spirit, soul, and our bodies. Thank you for life. Thank you, Father, that we live the life of God. Thank you, Father, that our lives are powered by you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Zoe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the life infusion this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that as we feed on you, thank you, Jesus, and drink of you, we have received your life this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that every part of us receive the life of God, the same spirit that dwells that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. That same spirit quickens our mortal body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We receive the invigoration of your spirit. We receive invigoration from you, God. Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You who calls dead things back to life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for quickening us this morning. Thank you for your quickening spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We magnify you and glorify you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm going to hand over to Pastor Duke Bade Father to continue as the Lord has, uh, by his grace. Um, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you need a minute? Are you good? I'm trying to change my background, but I'm not getting it. <laughs> God bless us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mama. Hallelujah. 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 And that's it. Thank you. Glory to God. Good morning, Mama. Amen. 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 Oh, God help me. Amen. God. Hallelujah. Can I help? Is there can you see my can you see me? I can see you. Okay. Claire. Okay. Oh Father. Thank you, Lord. I just need to get out of the background and come into out of the background. Okay. Back. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. God bless us all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning. We thank God for his mercies and his grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a joy, what a day, what a, a delight. What a way to wake up and have um, Holy Communion. This is the very first time I think I've had it this early. And so I really salute and appreciate God for what he's done. What a beautiful confession of faith. Hallelujah. We are grateful to God. Father, we thank you. Let's thank God for Reverend Wano. Let's appreciate God. Father, we thank you for your daughter. We bless your name, O oh God, for the mystery of godliness that you keep unveiling to her and through her. We ask God that you continue to uphold her. You continue to strengthen her, refresh her, restore her in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, for grace to be multiplied even in this season in a dimension that she hasn't known before. Let her come, O oh God, even into that realm of provocation. We are Lord, King of glory. She's not limited in her thoughts, not limited in her words, not limited in her actions. But Lord, she is walking in the dimension of your glory at a level, O oh God, that she has not known before. Lord, grant her, O oh God, King of glory, help us. Just raise help for her, even beyond the shores that she has known in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. For Lord, she is your sharp threshing instrument. Lord, we ask that you continue to keep and uphold her. And Lord, all the ones, O oh God, that you are, O oh God, King of glory, using to encourage her, checking on her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, walking the walk, even with her, Lord, and with many others, we are praying that, Lord, they receive that reward of faithfulness, that reward of diligence, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let every one of us, O oh God, come into this depth, O oh God, of your grace in every dimension of life. While we are relevant, O oh God, while we are, O oh God, not just relevant, but we are impactful in our walk with you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's continue to thank God for his goodness. We have come into day 27 of January 2024. Already 27 days. We are actually in the last week. Hallelujah. So we are going to do something. You're going to thank God for every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday that you have been through in 2024. You're going to thank God for them. They're going to acknowledge the mercies of God. Please do that right now in Jesus' name, day after day, the utter, utter speech. I want to thank you, Father, for every Saturday, every Sunday, every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday that we have been through. Lord, we bless your name for the uniqueness of each day. We thank you, Lord, for what each of them have spoken well, by the mystery, O oh God, of, of, your, of your will. Lord, how they have, you have helped us through those days, how you have strengthened us, how you have helped us to accomplish even new things in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the mystery of the day. We thank you, Father, for the mystery of each day in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for, Lord, your light is shining upon each of these days in the name of Jesus. We want to thank God for those days that are still ahead, every Saturday ahead of us, every Sunday ahead of us, every Monday ahead of us, every Tuesday ahead of us, every Wednesday ahead of us, every Thursday ahead of us, every Friday ahead of us. You want to pronounce a blessing over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, for the Saturdays, the, the Sundays, the Mondays, the Tuesdays, the Wednesday, the Thursday, the Friday, still ahead of us in 2024, in the year of the Lord, even years to come, we pronounce them blessed. We declare them blessed. There will be days of power, days of revelation, days of union with Christ, days of grace, days of your favor. Bless those days. Bless them. Bank them into the blessings of the Lord. Lord, there will be days of glory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There will be days, O God, King of glory of your power. 
in the blood, you will cause our eyes of understanding to see what you are doing when we come into them, that they are days that you have prepared for us. In the name of Jesus, none of us will fail. On, we will not stumble and hurt on those days. We will not, oh God, be hijacked oh, by, by weakness. In the name of Jesus Christ, the days of revelation in the mysteries of, of godliness, in the name of Jesus, there are days of demonstration of your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, as those days, oh God, become weeks, as they become months, as they become the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter of the year. Thank you, Lord, that they are productive in the name of Jesus. Even as they are progressive, they will not just be progressive, they shall be productive days in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we have received of your life, as we have been infused of your life, there will be days of life. We will not die. We will not bury and we will not, oh God, be bereaved in any of those days. We will not be buried and we shall not be bereaved. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there are days of joy. Days, oh God, King of glory, filled with celebrations of the goodness of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. As you make those days, oh God, King of glory, to be all that you want them to be. In Jesus' precious name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you again, even for coming. Thank you for being consistent by the message of God. I do not take it for granted. Thank you for the opportunity to participate and to be blessed by this great altar. And we thank God by, for his mercies. And thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the reflections. I'm also being enriched in the name of Jesus. So in the last two days, the first day we were looking at Christ, the person of Christ, the potter of the person of Christ, that but the Christ we have come to is the Christ we, 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 are, we are being called to get back to, is the Christ that is revealed in the word of God, is the person is of the Godhead. Hallelujah. It's not the um, culture generated Christ. It's not the one that tradition has painted. Actually, if we want to really grow in our knowledge of Christ, we need to read the book of Revelation to see his manifestation, to see what we're coming into in the name of Jesus. And so the person of Christ is the one who is the center of our lives, is the, is the king of our, of our lives, is the one we look up to. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then the second day, we look at the portal of grace and truth into the knowledge of Christ. To see the glory of God, it is only by his grace and truth. As his grace changes us and his truth shapes us. And we thank God for the provocation and I believe God, by, by the message of God, as we respond to the provocation, there shall be great manifestations in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This day, this day, by the mercy of God, we want to look at the essence of being united in Christ. To get back to Christ, we need to know the essence of being united in Christ, unity in the body. The truth is that even though we are saved individually, but we live this life collectively. Hallelujah. We live in union with Christ. There is a family of Christ. We are, we are called into a family. And I pray that even as we reflect, as, we, as the Holy Spirit takes us through this, our, our essence of relationship will be richer. In the name of Jesus, I see God walk in our relationships in a degree that only Christ can make happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I see Christ opening our eyes to the, to the ingredients that make the relationship to be as rich as it is between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I see healing in the area of relationships. In the name of Jesus, I see chains falling off our minds, chains falling off our minds, falling off our minds. I see veils being removed from our eyes, even as we progress in the essence of being united in Christ or unity of the body, the Lord will help us. There is no isolation in Christ Jesus. 
Every relationship is strategically ah, engineered. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every relationship we come into in Christ, they are strategically engineered by God. And they all have purpose, even to make us a richer version of ourselves in Christ Jesus. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. Let's look at some scriptures this morning as the Lord will help us to pray. Galatians chapter 3. I read from verse 23. I read to the end. I wanted to read King James Version. There's also New Living Translation. There is um, um, the Amplified, whichever translation the Lord alights his spirit upon. But this morning, from this uh, text, I want to read from King James Version. It reads, Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded. Sorry. Okay, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded by under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Before faith came, the Bible is saying we were all on remand. Do you know what it means to be on remand in prison? We were, they were not sure whether we we're going to be in this prison forever. We're still going appearing in court. In day out, day out, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. According to section three, um, subsection four, the, the court was still yet to decide our case. We were on remand before faith came. All the law could do was to place us on remand. But when faith came, we received a life sentence in Christ. How many of you received the life sentence in Christ? Christ is my life. That's the life sentence. And it has implications. Faith brings us into a life sentence where we, our life is no longer our own. We are being crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The law could not keep us because it was just a remand, showing us what the prison could be like, what the officers could be like, but we are still going in and out of court. We were not permanent. And I'm looking at this positively. A life sentence with Christ is what faith brought to us. But we don't do faith alone. Faith in Christ requires that we walk with others. We see others that he has equally saved. Hallelujah. The Lord grant us understanding this morning. Hallelujah. And so the question for us this morning, first, as we progress is, are you water baptized? Have you gone through the immersion with water? It's, a, it's part of the primary doctrines, the, the basic doctrines of Christ. But it's something that Jesus said we need to do it in order to fulfill all righteousness. So if you need to be baptized into the body, it's a doctrine, it's a sacrament, it is necessary. It is actually what Jesus said to John. It is, um, let us fulfill all righteousness, even when John did not want to baptize Jesus. So if you are not yet baptized, brother, sister, make yourself available maybe to your local church, Maybe a Lutheran can organize it that so that people are baptized into Christ. We cannot stay on remand. We want to be fully immersed in faith. We want to be fully uh, involved in the family of God. Hallelujah. But what is this saying in verse 27? But now that faith has come, somebody say, faith has come. Faith has come. We are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. 
For in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, you are all children of God through faith. Because faith has come, because we have received this life sentence in Christ, the only way we can navigate it is through faith. And this faith comes in unity with other believers. Hallelujah. So that's the why we need to understand that going back to Christ, we need to un walk in the re revelation that we are not in isolation. We are united in Christ. Hallelujah. God is taking us somewhere. One of the things that has happened in Christendom is the reformation of the 16th century. We are God you raised a man, Martin Luther, to begin to bring reformation into Christianity as a religion. He did so much, he challenged the days, he provoked, yes, I love that word. He provoked the institution of religion of his days and the world has not recovered from what God did through one man. And it, it started at age 21, he became a monk. He became a monk because he wanted to please God. He just wanted to please Christ. And even though he was um, Armstrong by religion, God did not leave him until God gave him the revelation of faith alone, Christ alone, grace alone. And with those three words, he challenged the institution of religion until out of uh, Roman Catholicism <laughs> came Protestant. We came out the Protestant movement. And so I want you to know that there's more in you. When you come into faith with Christ, it can use you to shape generations. It can use you to shape institutions. It can use you to change and shape families. And so be prepared for more of his expression through you in Jesus' name. But you see, reformation is not enough. We need to be conformed to the image of Christ. And part of the image of Christ is that he showed us what it means to walk in unity with the Father and the Son. He modeled it, but he also showed us how to live in unity with others. Hallelujah. With other believers. And so this morning, we're going to experience him even as he reveals himself. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, verse 11 and then verses 15 to 23. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, verse 11, and then verses 15 to 23. The Lord will help us to quickly set this uh, on a stage of understanding so that we can move into prayer. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, New Living Translation, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Because we are what? United with Christ. You, being united in Christ brings us into the realms of spiritual blessings, heavenly realms of spiritual blessings. And so we come into that understanding. Verse 11 of Ephesians chapter 1. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Hallelujah. Because we are united with Christ, everything is ordained to work together, including our relationships. They don't necessarily appear as if they are working together. They don't always present themselves as if there's something coming uh, good that we can see is coming out of this. But because we are united in Christ and with Christ, the outcome of our experiences is that they are good in the name of Jesus Christ. And then from verse 15, Apostle Paul writes, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith, in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people <laughs> everywhere. Love for God's people everywhere. I have not stopped thanking God for you. You can see the cross is what the Holy Spirit is presenting to us. Faith towards God and love for all God's people. 
we, <laughs> Lord, let me keep reading. By his grace, he will help us. I have not stopped, stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Verse 22, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Hallelujah. Christ is the head of the body. Christ is the head of the body. When we are in Christ, when as we are going back to Christ, according to the theme that God has given to us, we need to think beyond us being parts to the body of Christ. Thank God for the Holy Communion that we've shared this morning. It's not just warmed our hearts, it's, it plays us again in the body, reminding us that we are part of a body. We can eat together. We can drink together of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his blood. Hallelujah. And the, we see Christ as the head of the church. And so your relationship with God influences and affects the relationship or determines the quality of your relationship with others. But the Bible tells me in verse 23, the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. What that says to us, among many things, when Jesus said, we are two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in their midst. What is he doing? It fills. If there were supposed to be 1,000 and two people shows up, Jesus fills it and completes it. And so we, don't, we need numbers. We love to have more people, but don't let number make you feel that, oh, we are not big enough. We are not large enough. No, no, no. Jesus fills the vacuum. So he's the one we should be looking out for whenever we are in corporate worship. Once Jesus is there, everyone that ought to be there is there. But if Jesus is not there, even if one million people are there, it's not full. Hallelujah. Do we understand that this is the mystery of the body? Hallelujah. It fills and completes. So whenever you come together, it says in his name, know that it is made full by him. Hallelujah. So we can start. We don't have to wait for late comers before we start service. Because service starts because Jesus is there. Oh, God, Father, thank you, Father. We don't have to wait. We don't have to look at people who want to drag their feet in. We don't want to say, oh, let's wait for them two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. No, 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 no. Once Jesus is there, we are full. Amen. Once Jesus is there, we are complete in the name of Jesus. And that has a mystery for our relationships because we, we, we sometimes want to see people play their part. <laughs> and when that is not happening, we wonder what is happening. No, no, no. If Jesus is playing his part, the church is marching on and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it in the name of Jesus. But there is a place for all of us and we must make sure that we take our place and we fill our place. Hallelujah. We must make sure, I, I must make sure I take my place and I feel my place. And I make sure that others around me, they feel the essence of my part. I'm, I must be impactful in the body. I cannot just be um, on the sideline. No, no, if you're in the church, in the body that Christ is the head, make sure that you've discovered your part. 
make sure you are relevant, you are doing your own work according to the calling of God on your life in Jesus' name. We are talking about the essence of being united in Christ. Hallelujah. Let's go to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Thank you, Father. Lord, help us by your spirit. We want to know, even Lord, the mystery of this unity that we have in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. John chapter 13. I'll read from verse 1. Uh, it's going to, the Lord will help us before the Passover celebration. Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave the world, to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth. And now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and will return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist. We know this by the mercy of God. Then we go to verse six. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested. You will never ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash, your, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Please come back to verse 2. I trust God you've got your Bible open. I trust God you've got your Bible open. The Bible says to us, I read from verse 1 to 2 again. Or oh, verse 1, verse 1. Hallelujah. Before Passover celebration, I, I, I will also try to open it up in, in James Version. John chapter 13. Verse, verse 1, John 13, this scripture opened my eyes many years ago by the help of the Holy Spirit, and I pray it does that for us, even as the Holy Spirit has brought it, brought it back, even to my consciousness, to my awareness in this season, in Jesus' name. But New Living Translation says, before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on, on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. King James says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them until the very end. He used the word love twice, but there's something missing. What is that word missing? If you can, please help me type it in, this, in the chat. I want to see what is missing. What is it? What is it? Something is missing. There is a silent word that is not apparent to all of us. And Jesus wants to help us understand that power, that word in that of, the, of being united in Christ. What is that word? What can you read into that scripture? Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. Can we see the missing word? 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 Hallelujah. I want you to pray, Father. Unveil my eyes to see the missing word. What is the link before between the first love and the second love? He started loving them and he loves them to the end. Oh, were they always perfect people? Were they always good people? Were they always gracious people? Were they always lovable people? Were they always commendable people? There is a word that is in between that God wants us to come into. There is a rema in that verse one. 
of John, of John chapter 13. What is that word? Holy Spirit, provoke our understanding. Even this morning, in the name of Jesus, there is the word that connects the first love to the second love. There is a word. There is a word. There is a word. There is a word. There is a walk in it. In the name of Jesus, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. The silent word there, I've always looked at the word love, 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 and how we emphasize love in relationship. But between the first love and the second love is commitment. To be able to love and love to the end, the missing word, the side is not even missing, it's just silent. The bridge is commitment. Jesus was committed to loving the people that God brought to him. He was committed to loving them. In being united with Christ, there is a calling to commitment. Commitment in the family, commitment in the church, commitment in fellowship, commitment in ministry in order to love at the beginning and stay loving to the end. There is a mystery of commitment in the name of Jesus Christ. And you realize that Jesus knew that his time to come to the father, to go back to the father has come. And these are the, the two major players of his return. They were the ones mentioned in this chapter. First, uh, Judas. Second, Peter. They were vehicles and instruments in the way he was going to return to the Father. And Jesus paid attention to them. Not because he didn't know the parts they were going to play. But because he loved them. If Judas had repented, if he had not committed, if he had not killed himself, if he had not hung himself, if he had not thrown himself off the cliff, Jesus would have saved him because of his commitment to them. Hallelujah. Now, the scripture, that scripture also says to something, there is another second silent word or phrase. It said, having loved his own. Now, you can't love everybody. No, the, God loves the world and he, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. We can love everybody, but there is a caucus. The Bible says, having loved his own. There are some people we can only love at a distance, but there are people that are our own, that we need to love in a way that is sacrificial, in a way that we demonstrate commitment. And what breaks relationship is lack of sacrifice, lack of commitment. I want us to lift up our voices to God. Lord, imbibe, Im, impute into us the capacity to commit to love the people that are our own. In the name of Jesus, Lord, baptize us with the grace to love and to love to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, equip us with the energy, the capacity, the ability, the revelation to love and to love to the end in the name of Jesus. Enough of all the breaking and the breaking of hearts. Enough of all the breaking and the breaking of fellowship. We can break bread so that we can stay connected and stay united. We break bread together. It's an essence of saying that we are united in Christ Jesus. They, they, we taste enough and we say no more. We will be united in Christ and we'll be breaking each other's heart. I want you to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to discover the grace to be committed to the people you have brought into our sphere. In the name of Jesus, help us to know that the relationships you want for us are, are orchestrated by you as part of our development, part of our growth, part of our, uh, uh, of, of, of our development in you, part of our being stretched in you. Some people, they come to our lives as sandpaper and they have a role, 
They are to provoke patience. They are sandpapers. They are, they are spiritual sandpapers. You want to please them, you discover you can't please them enough. What do you do? You go further because of commitment. I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about people that God uses to shape on our rough edges just because of who they are in the name of Jesus. Father, by your mercy, help us by your spirit to gain discernment in relationship, to gain understanding in relationship, to gain the nature of Christ in relationship so that we can be, oh God, people that finish the course, that finish the race in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. You see, growth happens when we go beyond our comfort zone. And one of the dimensions of growth is in relationships. Sometimes you don't understand it. It comes, it can be so messy because we are too close to one another. We're too close to one another. We see each other's uh, mess. We see the, the weaknesses and we lose sight of our uniqueness. But God in his mercy is able to bring us into that divine alignment with his will, where we uphold one another with the essence of commitment in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when you are stretched and you are challenged to do things that are not comfortable, you can reach higher. Many of us are in relationships that are stretching us. I just want you to stretch. Just, just do a gesture of stretching. Lord, ah, this thing is stretching me. Mm. Oh, this conversation is stretching me. Oh, God. Just stretch, stretch, stretch. Lord, I'm not, I'm not being broken. I am being stretched in the name of Jesus. I am being stretched. I'm growing. Emotionally, I'm growing. Ah, in understanding, I'm growing. In knowledge, I'm growing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, I bless you, Father. For Lord, I'm coming out of my comfort zone. In the year 2024, I am developing spiritual muscles. Lord, that will keep me going until the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you that you are enabling me. This relationship is enabling me to reach further, even in you. And I don't know if you are doing that, but I'm doing it because I know that there are some relationships that what they will need from me is just for me to stretch, for me to stretch, to stretch in conversation, sometimes to be silent, sometimes to observe, sometimes they put, move me to my knees to pray. Sometimes they cause me even in to provoke me in a way that I want to know what did God say about this. And I go to the word of God and I discover even the mind of God concerning that situation. I pray for you as I pray for all of us this morning. Our relationship will stretch us. They will stop stressing us. They will only stretch us in the name of Jesus Christ. We begin to see the power of the unity that we have in Christ Jesus as every joint supplies. The mystery of Christ in the body is that every joint shall supply. Ah, that's Ephesians chapter 4, I believe, verse 16. It says the body makes an increase of itself in love as every joint supply. What are you supplying into your relationship? Don't supply headache. Don't supply heartache. In the name of Jesus, supply grace, supply commitment, supply the love of the Father, so, supply uh, prayer, supply even presence. Some people are so absent in relationship, so absent that you've stopped missing them because they've not taken their place. Call them back into position that God, by your mercy, every absenteeism in this relationship, maybe it's a relationship between husband and wife, emotionally absent emotionally absent in the name of Jesus. We call back unity in the family. I think we should actually pray from that domain force that marriages will come into the union that Christ intended. Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. If you are married, call your husband. Say, call them all body. Having loved your own, Modupa, you love her to the end. There is no breaking of focus. Ah, Modupe, having loved your own, you love him to the end. There is no breaking of 
focus, no breaking of commitment, no breaking of vision, no breaking of affection. I want you to call back affection into relationships that are intimate. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, let it be that we gain understanding of Christ in his own relationship. He knew that Judas was going to betray him. He knew that Peter was going to deny him. But look at how he treated them as people who needed to be used their feet to be washed. Lord, help me by your mercy to know the mystery of my service in the relationships that I'm in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, if you walk, read the uh, uh, commitment in, in, the, in the gospel, how Jesus raised his disciples, he was consistently calling them to increase their commitments to him, consistently. When, they met, when you meet with him, in um, in John chapter 1, verse 39. Let's look at John chapter 1, verse 39. This is what Jesus said to them. John chapter 1, verse 39, as they were, as they were introduced to Jesus by John the, uh, the Baptist. I re I'll read. The following day, John was again, from verse 35, was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Verse 19, come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, just let's see, let's begin from there. This is how they were introduced to Jesus. And the first thing that Jesus said to them was, come and see. Not much commitment. And there are some people that all they do with us in their journey, in our journey, is they just come and see. Come and see people. It's okay. But the, you invite them, they've come. And there are some people that even ourselves, our portion in, of work with them is just to come and see. We are the periphery. We are the level of spectator. Come and see. But that will not be your portion. In the church of Jesus, you will not be a come and see people. Hallelujah. You will not be a come and see person. In the, because there is no commitment there. They are, they, Jesus increased their level of commitment. That's why if you've been in uh, Eleuthera for, so many, for a few years, your level of commitment ought to have increased. That's how we come into unity. That if you're in the church, a local church, your level of commitment must increase. If you are in a relationship, your level of commitment must increase. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. But as they go further, let's look at him. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 21, the same group of people, they came and saw. But in Matthew chapter 4, let's say the level of commitment Jesus called them to. Lord, help us. From verse 18 to 21. Another, we are talking about being united in Christ. To forge unity, there are degrees of commitment we must come into. From verse 20, 18 to 21, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the sea, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter and Andrew, throwing a net into the water for they were they fished for living. Jesus called out to them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. Another degree of commitment. These ones were not come and, uh, come and see people. They were to come and do, 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 come and do. He said, follow me. I will show you how you fish for people. There's a degree of commitment there. Another call to a higher call of commitment. Don't just come and see, you come and do. Come and do business with me. Come and do life with me. I don't know the people that are in your life that are to do life with you. I want you to pray this morning by the grace of God that God will grace you and grace them to do life. Marriage is the institution where we do life together. We do life together at very uh, intimate levels. And that is a, an area that can 
if we are not committed, can suffer largely, suffer greatly. I want you to pray, Lord Jesus, everyone you have called me to do life with, my children, my parents, my siblings, my husband, Lord, by your mercy, infuse us with the commitment we need for that relationship. Let, there be un let us be united in Christ. It's even more challenging if everyone that you are called to do life with are not in Christ. Therefore, this morning, let the burden for their souls grip your heart in the name of Jesus Christ, that they come to the knowledge, the saving knowledge of God, even as you are united in Christ. There is only Jesus who can be the fulcrum for relationship. Is the only one that can be the anchor to hold everyone together. So therefore, in every home, in every intimate re relationship, where there is no commitment to do, Lord, or where commitment to do has become commitment to come and see, Lord, we are asking for correction. We are asking for correction at commitment level. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, let there be adjustment. Let there be an alignment done to participation, to commitment. In the name of Jesus, where there is error, where there is sin, where there is wickedness, Father, break the back and bring everyone that is we are connected to for life into the saving knowledge of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says immediately they left their net. We want to pray that, Lord, there will be a sense of urgency. Everyone that is supposed to be in, that is out, whether emotionally, spiritually, financially, physically. Lord, let there be a sense of urgency to realign, to realignment in the will of God, in the purpose of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for the immediacy, the urgency that is ringing in their hearts as they are waking up this morning. Even where we ourselves, where we need to be come and do people, but we have relegated ourselves to come and see people. Daddy, by your mercy, realign us, realign our commitment to be united in Christ, to be united in purpose, to be united on mission in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. The Lord God help us, Lord. Help us by your spirit to be able to access what you want of us in every relationship. In the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Some of us, we have to make correction. We need to repent of how we have become lukewarm. Some life may have happened to us. But you see, to walk with Christ, it is that phrase, he loved them to the end. You and I may need to receive fresh impartation of love, fresh anointing of love. Uh, love us, to, God help us to love to another level. Help us to love into a level of, 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 um, of commitment that Lord cannot be taken away from us. And the things that are breaking our hearts, the things that are causing us to withdraw, Father, by your mercy, Lord, by your fiat, take them out of the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where there is, oh God, King of glory, tradition of men that is making of no effect the word of God, the scripture of God, the power of God. Father, take them out of the way. Where there is loss of focus, where there is loss of affection, where there is love of loss of intimacy, where there is loss of commitment, where there is loss of understanding. Daddy, take them out of the way in the name of Jesus. Jesus said to Peter, when Peter was saying, why are you doing this thing? Jesus said, you will understand later. We are praying for understanding. Where there has been a break in understanding, that we cannot understand the gestures in our homes. We cannot understand the, the, the insinuations in our homes. When hearts are far away, that Lord, there's Lord, lack of understanding. Lord, we are praying that you intervene miraculously and bring us into the unity of the spirit into the unity of faith, the unity of the body, in our understanding, in the name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Another degree of commitment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. If anyone, let me read from oh, verse 23. Where are you? Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, the son of man must suffer. Yes, verse 23. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. Another degree of commitment in being united with Christ. It's not saying, I recognize that you all have reasons to say you want to go away because some it's, the suffering is heavy. The pain is tangible. Even he himself was going to suffer. It's not going to be the Jesus you, you, you think you've known who is giving you bread. You're going to see people spit on him. You're going to see people beat him. And he's not going to open his mouth because that is the prophecy. Sometimes we go through some circumstances that we look at people's reaction and we wonder, really? Really? Because I've lost my job, so I'm, I'm no longer um, beautiful. Because I've lost my job, I'm no longer... Um, a person that respect that to be respected, really. But Jesus allowed them to see him in his vulnerabilities. What do we do when we see people in their vulnerabilities? How have people treated us when we became vulnerable? These are the things that being united in Christ will shape so that we are consistent in our affection. That when time be, 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 do when time does time. We are not sh shaking. Our commitment is, is, is anchored in Christ. Our commitment is solid in Christ. So in verse 23, Jesus said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. From come and see to come and do to a place where you are not just following but you are carrying a cross. You know that this thing is heavy, but because of your commitment, you are staying because you know grace is available. You know that help is available. You know that grace is available. You know that help. I want us to pray for people who are carrying a cross and are following. That God, as you spoke in your word, let grace be released for them to be able to carry in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let heaven send, send strength into their spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, let their will not be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy, help them to see what they can do. Send their own helpers to them, even in today and in this season. In the name of Jesus, as we come back to Christ Jesus, help us to be equipped for the cross we need to carry. And help us to know the ones we don't need to carry. In the name of Jesus, there are some crosses we don't need to carry. But the ones he wants us to carry, Lord, we receive grace for them. We receive your help for them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. God uh, wants us to know that there is no place. in. It. Let's look at the body, the church, the family. There is no place for people that just want to give the bare minimum. As we advance in Christ, as we return to Christ, we must be ready to give him our maximum daily, daily. And that's the challenge. Because sometimes we see people, it's like today, you will see me and then you see me no more, Christianity. You see me, then you see me no more. No, we are to carry the cross and follow him daily. We are accountable to him daily. We make the body better daily. We, our daily commitment makes the body to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. And so wherever God has given us assignment, we receive Christ as the power of God. We receive Christ as the power of God to help us. And that assignment in your hand will flourish in the name of Jesus Christ. That family in your hand will flourish. The children in your care in your hand will flourish. Your spouse will flourish. You will flourish. Because Christ is the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus will complete you. Maybe you are alone and you're feeling, ah, I ought to have done more than this. The Bible says Christ fills everything and makes everything complete. Hallelujah. Even while you are waiting to be married, you need to know that you are a complete person. You are not a half person. 
Hallelujah. And when you get into marriage, you are complete to complete others. You are not even just complimentary. That mentality must stop. You are not just there to compliment another person. You are in that marriage to complete others. You are complete and you bring your own completeness. The other person too must come complete in the name of Jesus. So every area we have been being fractured, where we are incomplete emotionally, incomplete spiritually, incomplete physically. Lord, this morning, as we partake of your body, as we partake of your blood, let us come into the realm of completeness in you. Fill the gaps in our lives. Fill the gaps in our understanding. Fill the gaps in the revelation we have of who we are. Fill the gaps, oh God, King of glory, we have in our relationships that we too may be united with Christ in the name of Jesus. Where you need to wash our feet, Lord, wash our feet. Where you need to wash us from head to toe, Jehovah, have your way. Let us come into the fullness of the worship in the name of Jesus. The baptism of water, the baptism of the word, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for today. I'm, I know we've taken more time. But I want you to agree with God that you are coming into completeness. You are, there's no void in your life. In the name of Jesus, you bring completion into relationships. Hallelujah. You bring completion into relationships. The Bible says Jesus fills everything and completes everything. That should be the same way we show up. That should be the same way we show up. I'm not saying every time we have the energy, that, that is why we are one body. So that when I'm weak, I should tap into your completeness. When you are weak, you should be able to tap into my completeness. Hallelujah. As we all tap into the completeness that is available in God. And so I want us to pray. Father, help us, oh God, not to be, not to be weak and, uh, and uh, overtaking. Help us to seek to bring out the best. Bring out the maximum. And when we are in need, help us to tap into one another. Let there be connectivity of synergy, synergetic effects in our relationship, in our in the ministry, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless and we exalt your name as we help us to manifest unity at every level. Bearers of your word, bearers of your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' precious name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful weekend. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank wow. you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The degrees of commitment. Degrees of commitment. May we be those that don't just come and see. May we graduate in areas where we can come and follow but also more importantly grow to those that come and carry in the name of jesus may we be committed in love may we love maximally in the name of jesus may we be contributors and not just spectators in the name of the lord jesus may we care about god's body in the name of the lord jesus may we show love may we show the god kind of love in the name of Jesus, by this shall they know that you are my disciples when you love one another. May we have that kind of love, the God kind. May our love not be tailored to the world, but may our world come in contact with the love that comes from where we come from. We love from above. We have the God kind of love. Come on, would you decree and declare, I have the God kind of love. I show the God kind of love in the name of the lord jesus my love is literally out of this world in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus my love is not polluted or conformed to the world in the name of the lord jesus is the god kind of love in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus may the love we show one another testify if you read the book of john chapter 17 you will see that our love is actually a witness to the world do you know that do you know that that our love is a witness 
our love is a witness. The love and the unity we have is a witness, is a witness. It is a witness. My God, I pray that our love in the name of the Lord Jesus will witness to the world again of the Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you that we will be one even as the father is one in the name of the lord jesus that we thank you for your word we thank you jesus we give you praise we magnify you would you begin to lift up your voice and pray for pastor Dukwe, even that she stayed with us i mean she's been with us for a while now but she's poured into us in this past three days would you pray for her? Would you pray for her? Would you lift up your voice? And would you pray that the Lord will refill her and refuel her? I even gave her the option to do Sunday because she had night vigil, but she believed God for strength. And even after having a night vigil, she's been with us this early. Would you say, God, strengthen your daughter? Would you refuel your daughter with the power of the indestructible life reinvigorate her in the name of the Lord Jesus? In the name of the Lord Jesus, Maraba kusuri pepe, ina na na makasi araba, erepe keshura ba, eke sura ba, eramantari ba, eramamanduru bokoshki araba, makande. Would you strengthen her in her inner man by your spirit, Father? Strengthen her in her inner man by your spirit, and since the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in her, that same spirit quickens her mortal body in the name of Jesus. She receives a quickening spirit, soul, and body. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Marapa su repento, enda la bacanderebe, ishanda rababakiara, that out of her belly will continue to flow rivers of living water. Father, we even pray, thanking you for the, the, the dimension of revelation you have entrusted her to steward. And even as she's been stewarding that so faithfully, I thank you, God, manterebe kosuraba, that the reward of faithfulness will be her portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus that she will come into more in the name of the Lord Jesus. Even as she is diligent to be able to deliver revelation in a way that is accessible, to all of us that she doesn't corrupt the simplicity that we have in christ she is not one that complicates the simplicity that we have in christ father i pray that you open her up to more in the name of the lord jesus let the channels of her spirit open even as i hear you say come up higher even as john was already in the spirit and he had already communicated the heart of god to the churches you said come up higher and I will show you things to come father I do not know exactly what your daughter has spoken to you in private with regards to her ability to communicate end time uh, uh, prophecies and to bring people into the understanding of the end time uh, agenda and the calendar but I even see you giving her language to be able to communicate and to demystify for people that which you are saying because she is one that wants to prepare the bride for the coming of the Lord and Lord I see you giving her even in the way you express through her the language to uncomplicate it to bring people irapa even into understanding in this area and so father we thank you for that in the name of the lord jesus that people will sit under her teaching and she will be able to break open father i thank you that even as jesus sat down with his disciples and he broke bread and their eyes were open that oh god a whole hallmark of the ministry of grace through your daughter is that as she breaks open the bread the eyes of the people will be open to see that she will be one that is a key to open doors of revelation to others in the name of the lord jesus mm. The unlocking, O oh God, 
of the mysteries, even to the eschatology, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the end time mysteries. Mandaya kasendaya ondori ishkai esurapa kusuntali ezandia kadere ezundaria tari kato erando robo sundaria kai. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you for your daughter. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We love you. We appreciate you. We honor you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, everyone. Good morning. Family. That's us for today. Those of you that are reading the scriptures with me, stay. On tomorrow, we're back at 5 a.m. On Monday, Apostle TJ is back by the grace of God. Uh, uh, and he's gonna continue. Um, uh, yeah, he's gonna continue Monday to Wednesday. And uh, the 7 p.m. altar is back from Monday by the grace of God for the last couple of weeks of um the fast we press in the name of the lord jesus on wednesday we have a master class around your finances we have received wisdom for our finances in the name of the lord jesus finally uh, in by way of announcement uh no it so detox summit the 11th of february by the grace of god will be giving you um information within the next week so you know where you're coming what time to get there praise god hallelujah those of you that may want to volunteer to serve in a capacity you know how to do that in jesus name um the summit is free uh you just come amen and let's break bread together uh both spiritual bread and physical bread but it's all spiritual in jesus name glory to god and then uh content uh in the uk and content in North America. Uh, for those of you that are on the Telegram, you will see uh, we've sent you the brochures. Uh, do yourself a favor, register now so you can take the advantage of paying instrumentally. Um, it, uh, that would help you uh, plan your finances uh, to make sure that you don't let finance be a reason you don't uh, make that commitment to come. Trust me. Uh, when we get up on the mountain of content, it is different dimension of glory in Jesus' name. But we are excited about um, what God is doing in and through Eleuthera as we approach the 10th year. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a graced day. And make sure you live on the maximum, maximum love. Amen. God bless you. Those of you praying, uh, or reading the word, stay on.